Hi, it's Carly McAvoy. I want to look at some expected profit or loss problems. Um, expected value is sometimes called, and that is just a weighted mean. So what we have in this case is a 52 card deck. If you had two jokers, that would be a 54 cards, and maybe your problem has that. Just remember to add those two extra cards in. In a 52 card deck, you have four aces, you have 12 face cards, and you have 36 numbered cards, the cards 2 through 10. And there are four suits in a deck, that's 13 cards in each suit. For clubs, diamonds, hearts, and spades, some games, uh, the value of the card goes up if it's higher alphabetically. So for instance, the ace of clubs is not worth as much of the ace of spades. That's why I listed him that way. Okay, in this game, that's not part important. The game is to draw a card and it costs $5 to play. So if you draw a face card, you get $7. There are 12 face cards, so 12 times you would get $7. If you draw an ace, you get $10. There's four aces. And if you draw a red seven, you get 20. And remember, there's going to be two red sevens, so that can happen two times. But for all the other cards, you get nothing. So what is your expected profit if you're playing this game? To find that, you're going to take the amount you're going to win, times the number of times you expect to win that. So $7 times 12 because there are 12 face cards. Then $10 times 4 over 52, I should have said over 52, because there are 4 aces. Remember our denominator is the total sample space. We have 52 cards all together. And then we have a chance to win $20 two times if we draw one of those red 7s, 2 out of 52. And the rest of the time we're going to get zero. Now how to get 34? Well, if you take 52 and you subtract 12, 4, and 2, all the rest of them are those numbered cards that don't pay you anything. And if you multiply your probability times the amount you think you're going to win, then you can see that that comes out to be about $3.15. So that's what the expected payout is. Obviously, you never win $3.15, but that's the average amount that you win when you play that game but it costs $5 to play. So if you subtract your cost from what it, what the payout is, 315 minus $5 means that as a player, you're gonna lose $1.85 every time you play on average. Remember, you never lose $1.85. You're either going to lose your five or maybe win two or win five or win 15, but this is the average. So a player could expect to lose an average $1.85 each time they play, and the owner of the game would be expecting to make an average of $1.85 every time someone plays their game. Okay, now for the spinner game, we have a circle that's broken up into eight sectors, and it costs $10 to play, and the payouts are if you land on green, you get nothing, on blue, you get 10, on yellow, 15, and on red, you get eight. 18, sorry. So these are broken up into eight, so we can see that we get green three out of eight times, and we get nothing when we land on that. We get blue two out of eight times, we get $10 for that. We get $15 when we land on yellow, that's two out of eight times for that. And finally, we get $18 if we land on red, which is one out of eight times. And if you multiply all that out and round, I think it actually goes to exactly 8.5, you win $8.50 on average when you play this game. Now, this is kind of an enticing game because you can lose, but the rest of the time, you lose three out of three out of eight, but five out of eight times you either break even or win something. So it's kind of an enticing game, but look what actually is happening. $8.50 minus the 10 that you played means that you're actually going to lose $1.50 per time as the player on average. So a player could expect to lose an average of $1.50 every time they play, and the owner of the game would expect to make a profit of $1.50 every time someone plays their game. So the expected uh, payout for the player would be a negative value, and for the owner would be a positive value. All right, I hope you have a fantastic day. I'll see you next time.